Hi, yeah. just wanted to do a, a video on the KTM 390 Adventure. Just a little update video, really. I'm just cleaning it up after it's been out, uh, out and about. So, uh, yeah, just thought I'd do a quick video because a lot of people ask me about the KTM 390 Adventure. I've had it on the fleet of AT bikes now for a year. Um, three, three and a bit thousand miles it's done. Uh, probably about 50 riders have ridden it over the, the course of the year. Uh, it's not winning the chart. I, I have a chart where people vote for the bike they preferred most. Uh, and this is about, uh, well, it's third place with GS fourth, Himalayan first, uh, and the CRF uh, 250 was second. Although the new 300 uh, CRF is, is starting to dominate, really. A lot of people are, are really liking the new CRF 300. But uh, for the three, for the KTM 390, what people really like is its road uh, biased handling and 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 status. I mean, it's just a really nice road bike. Very, fa it's fast compared to the others. A really exciting engine, uh, really sharp handling, really keen and engaging and crisp. Uh, and makes the Himalayan look heavy and door witted. Makes a CRF look like a, a softly sprung trail bike. And makes the GS310 look a bit wheezy or feel a bit wheezy. Uh, and, and makes it feel a bit like what, what does the 310 GS do or what is it there for when the 390 clearly shines so strongly on the road uh, and so people have really liked it as a road bike they've not liked it so much as an off-road bike simply because of that standing position which is which I've highlighted and other people have highlighted it's just not a natural standing position uh, mainly based because uh, it's because it's derived from the the 390 Duke chassis and they've not done enough to transform it into a, a trail bike um, configuration you know the pegs are cantered the bars are low the seat's high in relation to the bars so you sort of sit on top of the bike uh, and so when you're standing you sort of pitch forward and, and your arms have to tuck really far down to get to the bars you could rectify it to an extent with risers and you can do uh, things to the pegs to flatten them off but you, you you're fettling something that was never designed to be a pure trail bike uh, and I think that's what lets it down as an all-rounder all and that's why people ultimately don't always pick the 390 because they're looking for an all-rounder and the 390 really is a road bike conversely the 310 uh for me doesn't shine on the road it's actually a bit boring on the road but off-road uh, i think it's really good i think it's really it's really exciting trail bike actually uh, i rode i've spent two days at sweet lamb off-road center on that and i've spent two days off-road at the sweet at the sweet lamb center on that that was hard work because of the crouch riding position. Also because of that traction control where you have to go into a sub menu, hold down the button and close the throttle for five seconds. And that, that re-engages every time you kill the engine or turn off the key. So you, it's a lot of faff where the 310 is just ready to go all the time. It's got a really nice standing position. It's got a really tractable engine which comes alive on trails. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't really excel or really offer any excitement, the engine, on the road, but off-road, I don't know, it just seems a really thrilling bike. Good handling, good riding position, as I say, good traction at the rear, and so for sort of a two-day off-road weekend, I much prefer the 310 to the 390. So out of the two, which is a best trail, better trail bike, the 310. That said, the 390, when you're in the moment, when you're, when you're really wanting to push on, when you're really engaged with the bike, when you overcome that slight, uh, crampness in the standing position by getting into a more of a racing jockey-like talk, talk then the 390 is really good uh, the suspension is excellent off-road it carries a lot of speed on rough terrain more so than the 310 because that, the suspension on that is quite cheap and bobbly whereas on this it's just really refined and smooth and so it's a shame in a sense that they didn't sort of tailor that, conf that standing configuration better because I think if they had the package is there. The engine's really tractable off-road. Um, it gives a lot of low-down chug, much more than I, uh, than I thought. And the suspension's really good. So, yeah. So, I think the winter project for this is to try and just improve it a little bit for the trails, uh, just to make it more comfortable as an all-day standing position bike. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the 390, um, it's impressed a lot of people. It impressed me when I took it on a, a three-day camping week trip around Wales, loaded up with gear i did a long stint on the motorway on that trip i was surprised at how refined it felt on the motorway it would do 80 85 90 flat sort of flat out ish um but hold that at a nice easy rhythm it, it didn't seem strained at 80 miles an hour whereas the gs310 is very straight at 80 miles an hour and the himalayan over there 
probably would never get to, well, it does get to 80, but with a bit of a run-up. Whereas this was just nice and brisk, nice and sharp, nice and stable. It felt a bigger bike on the motorway, sort of transformed into something more than it was when you're traveling at higher pace, which I liked. But then at the same time, feels really light and agile on the on the back roads. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a really good bike, and I've I've got to say, out of all the bikes, it's the one that's given me the least amount of trouble. The Himalayan head bearings have gone, the head bearings have gone on the three ten GS, and there's electrical gremlins with the gear indicator. The CRF two fifty didn't always want to start. That's given me a few little issues. Three ninety has been been foolproof. Uh, the only in- incident I had was when I dropped the bike. Uh, getting off the bike and not putting the side stand down. Don't know how I did that. And it uh, before I put the bark busters on, just broke the lever, and that's all. But no damage to the paddles or anything. No damage to the rest of the bike. And since then, I put the bark busters on to just to give it some more protection. So who would it suit? Well, I, I think it would suit a road biased adventure rider who wants something light, nimble, and fast to ride on all sorts of adventures, uh, A, B roads, gravel track. Uh, and also some long haul stuff as well. Who it wouldn't suit is somebody who wants an all day trail bike um, or who maybe wants to carry two people, which most of these A2 bikes you wouldn't want to anyway. Uh, I think the price are getting a little bit creepy with the price at 6000 now for a brand new one of these feels a lot of money. Um, but you know, you weigh it up as to whether it gives you a lot of opportunities as a bike. I personally prefer it to the CB500X. Um, that bike lacks excitement. Uh, the 390 doesn't lack excitement. So for me, if I was wanting a faster A2 bike for commuting road and road work, I'd go for the 390 over the CB500X just because I think you'd enjoy riding it more uh, and get more fun out of it. Uh, and also, it's a lot lighter than the 500X. So when you do good trail riding or if you do good trail riding, it's, it's more capable, it's more alert, more engaging, more dynamic, more capable, less intimidating. The 500X feels a big bike off-road, the 390 doesn't. The 390 feels like a little 125, so yeah. Cast wheels, I don't think are an issue really, unless you're going real boulder hopping, which you're not going to on this bike. I did look at spoke wheels, but your best part of a £1,000 just for some spoke wheels, which are tubed, so then you've got the issue of, of if you get a puncture. So I'm leaving the bike pretty much as stock, I'm just going to sort over the winter the foot peg position out and put some bar risers on just to see if I can make it a little bit more comfortable. But other than that, it's, as I say, it's been a popular bike on the fleet. It just lacks that all-round appeal, which means it's getting pipped to the post by the Himalayan or by the 300 Rally. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's it, KTM 390 Adventure. It's certainly worth trying one. I don't think you'd be disappointed. A lot of people were disappointed by this bike when it came out. It wasn't what they were expecting. Um, and I think that's what took the wind out of its sails. Uh, and I think it's a shame because the bike they've actually produced is a good bike. But as I say, not the one people were anticipating. Whether the 490 is going to be that bike, the 490 Adventure is going to be the one that conquers all. I don't know. I don't know. I think the problem with that bike is if they try and make it a proper adventure bike, dual sport, 21-inch front wheel, 18-inch rear, it'll be £8,000 and people will complain about the price. So in a bit of a, between a rock and a hard place, KTM, a diluted product like this for a reasonable amount of money or something really specific and what the market wants, but at a price that the market probably won't bear. Yeah, tricky one. Tricky one. Let's see what compromises they uh, find. That's it. 390 KTM Adventure. Cheers.